Good morning. Welcome to Gordon Street Christian Church. This is our worship service for May the 24th, 2020. Uh, Wherever you happen to be, we are glad that you're with us. The Lord's Spirit can bind us together even though we're not in the same places at the same time. Uh, A number of, uh, well, at least one announcement I wish to make for you. Uh, Please stay with us at the end of of this regular service, and we will have a short uh, Memorial uh, Day service. Uh, We hope that you will be with us uh, for, for that. Let us begin our worship. Our call to worship this morning is Psalm 68, fourth verse. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Lift up a song to him who rides upon the clouds. His name is the Lord, exalt before him. Would you bow with me for the invocation and then join me in praying the Lord's Prayer? Lord Jesus, you have called our names in your prayer. Though we are weak and stumbling, you have shown your confidence in us. Help us remember that your confidence in us is rooted in your confidence in the power of God's love to work in us. Help us to surrender to the power of that love that we might love and glorify you. We pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our epistle lesson is 1 Peter, 4th chapter, verses 12 through 14, and chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. Beloved, Do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory which is the Spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary the devil prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. 
Amen. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we gather here today with joy and with thanksgiving. We're gathered in various places, families together, families at home. We gather by the power of your spirit that binds us together. And we give you thanks for that spirit. We thank you for ties that bind us even though we are in separate places. We come before you today to worship and to glorify your name for all the wonderful things you have done for us. We confess our sins and ask that you will cleanse us of our sins, forgiving those sins and strengthening us against temptation. We pray for those who are sick, for those who have lost loved ones. We pray for those who are in the hospitals. We pray for those who are lonely at home. We pray for those who have no one to look to for help. We pray that you will touch all of our lives. And those of us who are able, we pray that you will guide us to do the things that will help those who need help. We thank you for your holy word. And pray that as we read and study it today, that our hearts and minds will be opened, our ears will be opened, that we might hear it. We pray that it will take root in our lives and bear fruit for you. On this memorial weekend, we remember those who have given their very lives for the sake of others. We pray that... You continue to bless their families who are missing them. And we, we know that those who have given their lives so selfishly will indeed know the joy of your love now and always. We pray, Father, that your church in this place and in every place around the world will be faithful in sharing your love with all people. We pray that we will help them to know the good news that you have come into the world through Jesus Christ and have offered to us a place with you, a place in your kingdom, and have offered to us forgiveness and have offered to us love that is never-ending. May all the world be enlightened by the light of Christ. May all the world turn unto you and look unto each other as brothers and sisters in your great kingdom and your eternal family. And may all the world come to know how to live together in peace. Father, be with us throughout this service. Bless each one who is worshiping with us, search all of our hearts and fulfill our deepest needs in accordance with your will. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus, our risen and exalted Lord. Amen. Our gospel text this morning is taken from John's gospel, chapter 17, beginning in the first verse. And going through the 19th verse. No, actually, uh, going through the 13th verse. Listen for the word of the Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. 
So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them, In your name that you have given me, I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word. And the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. Here and endeth the reading from God's holy word. May he add his blessings to our understanding of it. Let us pray. And now, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our Redeemer and our strength. Amen. If you think about it, most prayer that people pray is a private prayer between a person and God. Most prayer is silent prayer arising from the heart, speaking to the Lord of all. It is prayer that is quiet before God, sometimes not so quiet, but crying out in distress. It is prayer that awaits and listens for the word and presence of God and the answer that he gives. Whether it is a child at school who lifts a prayer in silence if he sees the bully, the school bully coming toward him, or the young adult who lifts a prayer for God's peace at a time when he is nervous and awaiting a job interview, whether it is the person sitting in a hospital waiting room while a loved one is having surgery. Many of our prayers are private prayers. They're silent prayers lifted to God, and God hears them. Our Lord commended such prayers as those. It is found in Scripture that many of the times that Jesus prayed, he was praying alone, that it was a private prayer between him and the Father. Not always, but many of the time. We remember that one morning the disciples got up and the people in Capernaum, Galilee area were looking for Jesus and they didn't know where he was And the disciples finally found him. They found him out, having gone out early in the morning, praying to the Father. We know another time that he had fed a multitude, 
Then he dismissed the crowd and sent the disciples away across the water, and he went up on the mountain to pray. Many of our Lord's prayers were private prayers between him and the Father. But in our scripture text today, this was a prayer of our Lord made to the Heavenly Father, given, given out to him all the things that were on his heart. And it was a prayer that he prayed in the presence of the disciples. It was a prayer he intended his disciples to overhear. And not just those disciples. It was a prayer that he intended all of us to overhear. Do you realize how important it is for some people, for, for all of us really, at some point in time, to hear our name mentioned in somebody else's prayer? Do you realize how that makes us feel? To know that our name is being brought before God's throne of grace. Jesus was praying this night, as we have said on previous Sundays, a night in which he would be betrayed, the night in which he would be arrested and mistreated. He prayed not just for himself, but for his disciples and for you and for me in a time when he knew he was about to suffer excruciating pain, when he was about to go through things that are unendurable, he was thinking even then about us, about how we would fare, about our needs. That is a great example of how much he loved us. He was praying for his disciples, even though his disciples were going to fail him that very night. He was praying for them, knowing their needs better than they knew their needs themselves. It might seem surprising to us that in his prayer he seemed so confident of what the disciples would be able to do. Surprising to us because the disciples so often seemed to misunderstand what Jesus was saying. We find time and time again in the Gospels that they did things wrong, that they misunderstood what Jesus was talking about, what his teaching was. There was the occasion that they were approaching a Samaritan village and they refused to receive Jesus. And some of the disciples said to Jesus, Lord, should we pray to the Father that he send down fire and destroy that village? And Jesus rebuked them. Another time there were mothers who were bringing their children to Jesus that he might touch them and bless them. And the disciples wanted to forbid them. And Jesus rebuked them. There was another time that the disciples were arguing with each other on the way, even after all the things Jesus had taught them about serving one another, taking care of one another, loving one another. And they were disputing about which of them would be the greatest. And Jesus took them aside again, as he had done before, and told them, he who would be great among you must be least of all and servant of all. The disciples failed him time and time again. They would fail him that night. They would fail him again even after that night. Just as you and I have failed the Lord again and again. And if we live long, we will fail him in the future. But this prayer of our Lord overheard, intentionally prayed so that we could overhear it, shows the Lord's great love and concern for all of us. 
Jesus said, and one of the first things that he said was, glorify your son so that the son may glorify you. Now that might seem a little strange to us, but and to many people it, it does not convey what he was actually talking about. But what he was talking about here in John's gospel, when he talked about being glorified, he was talking about his crucifixion. It was through his crucifixion, it was in his crucifixion that the love of God for all humanity was on display. And God's glory and the Lord's glory was truly seen. So when we think of this prayer as being in reference to the crucifixion, how difficult it must have been to have prayed that prayer. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you. And indeed, the prayer was answered on the cross. That astounding love was on display for the whole world to see. And it would draw people in that time. And it has drawn people through all time, even to the present time, to give praise and glory to our God. Then Jesus also prayed for his disciples. He asked the Father that God would keep them... uh, And I think that was a prayer for security. That God would keep his disciples during this time of crisis, during all the days and months and years ahead, God would keep the Lord's disciples close to him. I think it was a prayer for security not in the sense of protecting them from suffering, because Jesus had already told them that they were going to suffer. He had told them that in the world they would have trouble. He had indicated that some of them might even have to lay down their lives for their faith. It was not that he was asking for protection from suffering or protection from even dying. He was asking that God would keep each one of those disciples, each one of us, in his own care. That he would keep them in such a way that they knew his love regardless of the circumstances that they had to face. When we think about a good parent in our world today, A good parent lets its child, his child, her child know that their love is so strong that it really doesn't matter what may happen. The parent may not be able to keep the child from sickness, may not be able to keep the child from making wrong decisions, may not be able to keep the child from suffering because of the decisions they make or suffering because of some other reason. But a good parent lets that child know that regardless of what happens, regardless of their decisions, good or bad, regardless of things that involve life and death, that that child has the parent's love and support in all things for as long as they live. I think that's what God is being asked by the Lord Christ here. That his disciples and that you and I, regardless of the things that we experience, regardless of the decisions we make, good or bad, will be able to know that God's love abides with us now and always 
and that nothing can separate us from that love. How much strength did that give those disciples in the days ahead and in the years ahead when they faced so much opposition, when they faced so many trials and hardships, to know that God's love in Christ was with them always had to have given them great strength. And it gives us great strength as well. And then Jesus prayed also for his disciples that they may be one. Just as I and you, speaking of himself and the Father, are one. He was praying that his disciples would be so united with him and he was so united with God, the Father, that they would create a bond that could not be broken. This must, in our minds, be one of the most difficult prayers for God to answer for us because all of us have differences of opinion. Sometimes it's very difficult for us to stay united when our opinions are so different, when our viewpoints are so different. But Jesus knew his disciples were not all alike. If you remember, some of those disciples were zealots who who wanted to do away with the power of Rome and Israel and would, were willing to do so violently. Some were tax collectors among his disciples who were considered people who were cooperating with Rome and were despised by many in Israel. He knew from his own disciples that agreement was not always easy, but he prayed to the good Lord, to the Heavenly Father, may they be one, may they be united in their love for me and for you. May they be one just as you and I are one. And that prayer extends even to us. In our day and time, there are many denominations across the face of this country, many different ones because different groups interpret the scripture differently and feel differently about different things. But even in our differences, we can be united by the love of Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Heavenly Father. Jesus' prayer for his disciples and for us prayed at a time when the disciples were in great crisis, prayed at a time when they didn't know what the future held for them, prayed at a time when they didn't know which way they should go. He was praying for them that they would continue to abide in the love of God shown them through himself, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The same prayer goes for us, was prayed for us, was intended for us to overhear so that we know the Lord of all is keeping us in his heart. Even in our times of crisis, in our times when we do not know which way we should go, we look into the future, we do not know when we will come together In one place, in a sanctuary like this, we we don't know the future. We don't know the impact that it will have on the church, the impact that it will have on the nation or the world. But Jesus prayed for you and for me. He prayed that in spite of our differences in spite of the fact that we're distant one from another, in spite of the fact that we often fail, we often misunderstand, we often do the wrong thing, 
that his love still abides with us. It is not broken, and we cannot be separated from it. So even in this time, we must remember that our love is not formed perfectly yet. Sometimes our relationships with one another do become broken. Sometimes our love fails us. But remember that Christ prayed to God the Father. Remember that with Him, His will will be done. Remember that if Jesus asked God in prayer to be with us and to bless us and to help us, that prayer will be answered. So even though our love for one another is still in formation, even though it is not yet perfect, we can look forward to the time when the Lord's prayer to the Father for us will be completely answered. We can look forward to the time when our love is made perfect, when God in his great wisdom and power and love unite us all. We can look forward to that time spoken of in the book of Revelation when it was looked and when it was seen that a multitude that no one could number was gathered before the throne, a multitude that included people from all nations, tribes, and tongues, a multitude giving praise and glory and honor to God. God will fulfill it. His love will win. Thanks be to God. We disciples count it a great privilege to gather at the Lord's table. A great privilege that our Lord has invited us with all our shortcomings, with all our sins and failures. His, his love has been so great that even at this table, He calls us to come and to take part. Taking a bread and cup in remembrance of Him in remembrance of his sacrifice 
in remembrance of his love, in remembrance of his resurrection. It is the Lord who invites us. And it doesn't matter who you are, where you've been, what you've done. The Lord gave his life that we might have life. And he came back in resurrection with arms stretched out to all who would come to him and to all who will come to this table. Come and eat, remember, and rejoice in being part of the family of God. At this table, we celebrate the greatest love that there's ever been. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for our Lord Jesus Christ, for his love for us, for all that he showed us, for the things that he did. We thank you that he was willing even to lay down his life for our sakes and then to take it up again and to welcome us here as a part of his family. We thank you that he is truly the host at this table and that as we partake, we are not doing it in and of ourselves or alone, but you are with us. Your very presence, your very spirit is here, strengthening us, nourishing us, guiding us. We pray that you will help us to repent of sin, to turn away from all that is evil, and to allow your love to fill our lives and to flow from our lives to others. We pray that that day will come when your prayer for your disciples and for us will be fully answered, when all of us join in unity one with another, glorifying you now and for all eternity. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we recall, on the same night that the Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in a like manner, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had blessed it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sin. Drink you this and remember that Christ died for you, and be thankful. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for the gifts of bread and cup. The gift of Jesus Christ, our Lord. The gift of his abiding presence. We pray that even as we have partaken of this bread and cup, that you will nourish us in body and in spirit, that your love will grow in us and overflow to others, that we will learn to live in accordance with your will. Bring us to that great day when all your people will be united in praise and worship of you. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you for being with us. We look forward to the time when we can join together again. The Lord be with you. 
now and always. Memorial weekend, normally we here at Gordon Street Christian Church pause to remember those who have died in service to our country. Uh, we are grateful for their lives and we continue to remember uh, their families. Memorial Day commemorates United States men and women who died while in military service to our country. Today we have placed a wreath in their memory. We remember all the fallen, including those connected to the congregation at Gordon Street Christian Church. Henry West, U.S. Navy, July 28, 1945, uncle to Martha Smith. Guy Thornton Eubanks, Jr., U.S. Army, September 5th, 1950, brother to Virgil Eubanks. Dempsey Woodrow Parrott, U.S. Army, May 4th, 1968, brother to Billy Parrott. Lane Hargrove, U.S. Army, April 21st, 1968, nephew of Eleanor Lee and cousin to Marsha Roundtree. Joseph Hargrove, U.S. Marines, May 15, 1975, missing in action, body never returned, nephew of Eleanor Lee and cousin to Marsha Roundtree. Let us pray. We pray for all who suffer as a result of war, for the injured and disabled, for the mentally distressed, and for those whose faith in God and in other people has been weakened or destroyed. We lift our hearts to you.
for the homeless and refugees, for those who are hungry, and for all who have lost their livelihood and security. We lift our hearts to you. For those who mourn the dead, for those who have lost husband, wife, children, or parents, and especially for those who have no hope in Christ to sustain them in their grief, we lift our hearts to you. As we remember those who died in war for the cause of peace, as we look to the future of our children and grandchildren, as we think of the war-torn, blood-stained, sorrowful world, Lord, make us peacemakers. Lord, Hear our prayer and come to us in perfect love to drive away our fear in the name of the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 